Mr. President, Excellences, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this committee is reflected in the proper agenda for prosperity and development, which embodies the expressions of our shared determination to achieve peace, prosperity, national development, address extreme poverty, poverty, inequalities, regional disparity, infrastructure deficit, climate change, and equitable distribution of our national wealth. Given Liberia UFO populations of more than 60 percent, my government initiated a youth rehabilitation and empowerment program, the social economic empowerment of disadvantaged youth project between 2019 and 2021, with the subsequent launch of a 13 million United States dollar national fund drive for the rehabilitation and empowerment of at-risk youth in Liberia. We remain of the firm conviction that when empowered, our youth can be a positive force for good. As Liberia Feminine in Chiefs, women empowerment and the promotion of gender equality remain key priorities of my government. Women do not only comprise almost half of our country's population, but they, are, they also play important roles at all levels of society and must be given equal deserved attention support and a place at the leadership and governance table in our society. To this end, we have developed a legal framework, including the ratification of regional and international instruments to address gender inequality, which are being carried out as a result of social cultural perception, practices, and stereotypes that support male dominance and the subordination of women. I would like to inform you that my government, together with the UN partners, is implementing the EU Spotlight Initiative to end violence and harmful traditional practices against women and girls and promote their sexual and productive health and rights. Furthermore, the government of Liberia is currently implementing a $50 million United States dollar ECOWAS funded project to enhance the capacity of female entrepreneurs. Mr. President, I wish to express Liberia's sincere gratitude to our local and international partners, both multilateral and bilateral for their continuous support to our national efforts in combating the pandemic. As a result of, the, of that support, Liberia is well on its way to achieving her immunity, hopefully by the end of this year, with 67% of the population already fully vaccinated. Distinguished delegates, Ladies and gentlemen, my government continues to take actions through the formulations of new policy framework and strategic interventions to address the impacts of climate change and protect the environment. Liberia commits to achieving a target of 64% reduction in carbon emission below business as usual by 2030. We anticipate that the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Egypt, COP27, will provide the opportunity to accelerate actions towards the goal of the Paris Agreement and the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Mr. President, Excellencies, 
Sustainable development can take place only in a peaceful and secure environment. In fulfillment of our commitment to the maintenance of regional and global peace and security, Liberia takes pride as a troop contributing country with Liberian troops and other security apparatus serving in the United Nations multidimensional integrated stabilization mission in Mali, the United Nations mission in South Sudan, and the United Nations Interim Security Forces for Abai. We thank the United Nations and our bilateral international, uh, multilateral partners for the support we continue to receive in facilitating our contribution to global and regional peace and security. Mr. President, Excellencies, I am pleased to report that the IMF latest appraisal of the ongoing program it has with Liberia is very positive. It shows that inflation rates have been significantly reduced. There are now better prospects for economic growth compared to previous years in spite of the negative effects of COVID-19. Our effort at instituting new policy measures to fight graphs were also particularly commended in the report, along with our adherence to prudent fiscal management. Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, democracy in Liberia also continue to grow from strength to strength. After many years of civil upheaval, Liberia is becoming a stronghold for peace and a safe haven for democracy. This is because we have taken actions in the last few years to build and strengthen democratic institutions such as the press and the Liberian judiciary. We have put forward new legislation that empower the media while eradicating those that have tended to suppress free speech. I am proud to say that from the beginning of my administration to date, there is no political prisoner in Liberia. A regional conferences of the Manor River Union and the ECOWAS, which have been called to discuss efforts to restore democracy in a few troubled spots in our West African region, Liberia has constantly and consistently pleaded for a strict adherence to constitutional terms limit and for a return to democratic civilian rule in cases of military takeover. Liberia is expected to hold presidential and legislative elections in October 2023. The forthcoming election will be crucial to consolidating our democracy. In this regard, I wish to underscore my government's unwavering commitment to ensuring that the enabling environment continues to exist for the conduct of peaceful, free, fair, transparent, and inclusive elections. This is in keeping with my commitment to ensure that the democratic will of the Liberian people is respected at all times. In the run-up to the 2023 elections, it is incumbent upon all prospective candidates to avoid the incitement of violence and any other behavior that could deprive the Liberian people 
of the peaceful space that they need to freely exercise their franchise and freely express their political will in choosing their leaders. We must let the people decide and then we must respect their decision. This is indeed the true essence of democracy. Mr. President, Excellencies, if we must advance common good of humanity, the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals, then international cooperation must be given primacy and the principles of solidarity must have its rightful place. We have the platform to generate the transformative solutions we seek. The world is washing. Our people are washing. And we must now seize the moment, confront the challenges, and collectively endeavor to lift the poor from poverty and hunger, sickness and disease, and ensure progress, development, and prosperity for all. At the same time, we must protect our planet, guarantee and maintain global peace, security, and stability. Mr. President, we must pursue efforts to make the United Nations more efficient, more effective, more inclusive, more accountable and more suited for the purpose. I thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Liberia for his, the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mohamud. President of the Federal Republic of Somalia. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your Excellency, the President of the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Heads of States and Governments, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, all protocol is observed. It's a great honor and privilege to address the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly here in New York today. At this particular challenging time in human history, I welcome the important theme of this session which, which, direct, which direct us all to find a trans transformative joint solution to the various interlocking challenges we face today. There is absolutely no doubt that today we as a community of nations collectively face the most challenging social, economic and environmental situation we have experienced in the modern history. Hey.